Before beginning any maintenance procedure on an M-series meter, always make sure that all internal pressure has been relieved to zero pressure. We strongly recommend that you review the M-MA Meters Installation and Parts Manual, number M100-10, for all warnings and information on this product. The manual can be found at lcmeter.com under Publications. The tools required for disassembly and assembly are a 5 16 3 8 7 16 and half inch hex wrench or socket, a ratchet wrench or power driver, a socket extension, a 1 quarter and 3 16 Allen wrenches, two flat blade screwdrivers, a plastic tip hammer, anti-seize compound, number 242 Loctite, a spare displacement rotor gear, which is optional, and plenty of clean shop towels. For ease of instruction in this video, the meter has been removed from the piping. The counter, as well as the register dust cover, have also been removed. Begin the disassembly by removing the drain plugs from the front and back of the meter covers with the quarter inch Allen wrench. Allow the meter to drain completely. Next, remove the counter bracket assembly. Remove the four 3 8 inch hex screws that secure the bracket to the front cover with a 3 8 inch socket with extension and set aside. It's a good idea to have several small cups available to keep screws and small parts organized as you remove them. Next, remove the packing gland assembly that was behind the counter bracket. Remove the two hex screws that secure the packing gland to the front case with a 5 16 socket or wrench. Pull it straight out of the case and set aside. Using a half inch socket or wrench, loosen the front cover screws in a crisscross pattern to prevent stress on the cover. Remove the screws and lift off the cover, exposing the cover O-ring, timing gears, and bearing plate. If available, hold a spare displacement rotor gear as shown to prevent the timing gears from turning while loosening the fasteners. If unavailable, use a shop rag between the gear teeth. Use an Allen wrench to remove the blocking rotor screw. Remove the screw and the packing gland driver. Next, use a spare rotor gear as shown to prevent the gears from turning. Loosen and remove the screws and dome washers from the displacement rotor shafts with a 7 16 socket or wrench. Now, remove each of the timing gears using a flat blade screwdriver. Beginning at the key side of the gear, gently pry up each gear with the screwdriver. Inspect the gears for any broken or rounded teeth. Consult the manual for the procedure on removing frozen or corroded timing gears. Using a 5 16 socket or wrench, loosen and remove the hex screws that secure the plate to the casing. On the opposite sides of the gear plate, near the dowel pins, are two small slots. Insert a flat blade screwdriver into each slot as shown and gently pry up on the bearing plate. Be careful not to mar or scratch any of the surfaces. Lift the bearing plate off the case, inspect for damage or excessive wear, and set aside. The blocking and displacement rotors are now exposed. Gently remove the blocking and displacement rotors from the meter housing. Inspect the rotors and housing for excessive wear or damage. Flip the meter over. Using a half inch socket or wrench, 
Loosen the back cover screws in a crisscross pattern to prevent stress on the cover. Remove the screws and lift off the cover, exposing the cover o-ring and rear bearing plate. Using a 5 16 socket or wrench, loosen and remove the hex screws that secure the plate to the casing. As with the front bearing plate, insert a flat blade screwdriver into each slot at the edges as shown and gently pry up on the bearing plate. Be careful not to mar or scratch any of the surfaces. Lift the bearing plate off the case, inspect for damage or excessive wear, and set aside. The meter is now completely disassembled. To assemble the meter, make sure the back side of the housing is facing you. The inlet side of the meter housing with the nameplate will be to your left. Begin by installing the rear bearing plate. With the flat surface facing the meter cavity, align the plate with the dowel pins on the housing and press into place. Gently tap the bearing plate into position with a plastic hammer until it is firmly seated in the meter housing. Apply anti-seize compound to the threads of each of the 5 16 bearing plate screws. Half tighten the screws in a crisscross pattern. Then torque the screws per the chart in the manual in the same crisscross pattern to secure the bearing plate. Install the cover o-ring into the groove on the housing surface. Position and install the rear housing cover with the half inch screws. The rear cover does not have a hole for the packing gland assembly. Be sure to apply anti-seize compound to the threads of each of the cover screws. These are self-tapping screws. To ensure proper alignment of the threads cut by the screw, turn each screw counterclockwise until you feel it drop into the thread. Then turn the screw in the clockwise direction until finger tight. Tighten the cover screws in a crisscross pattern as shown in the manual with a minimum of two passes. The first pass should be at half torque with the second pass at full torque, approximately 66 foot-pounds. This method will ensure uniform seal compression on the cover o-ring or gasket. Flip the meter over exposing the housing cavity. Insert the large blocking rotor into the central hole in the rear bearing plate with the tapered end up. Align the rotor surfaces in a vertical position. Install the displacement rotors into the remaining rear bearing plate holes with the tapered ends up. Align the leading edge of the rotor vanes with the bottom of the internal port openings on either side of the housing. Now install the front bearing plate. With the flat surface facing the meter cavity, align the plate holes with the three rotor shafts and the dowel pins on the housing and press into place. Gently tap the bearing plate into position with a plastic hammer until it is firmly seated in the meter housing. Apply anti-seize compound to the threads of each of the 5 16 bearing plate screws. Half tighten the screws in a crisscross pattern. Then torque the screws per the torque chart in the manual in the same crisscross pattern to secure the bearing plate. The rotors should be easy to turn and have a small amount of end play. Turn the rotors to make sure they revolve freely. Jog the rotors from end to end to check for end play. If they do not move easily in both tests, remove the rotors and check for burrs and corrosion deposits. Next install the large blocking rotor gear on the middle shaft. Position the woodruff key in the slot on the shaft, slide the gear with the tapered opening down onto the shaft, and lightly tap into position with the plastic hammer. Each rotor gear has a timing mark on the gear surface. It is critical that the marks on the displacement gears line up with the mark on the large blocking gear as it rotates. Rotate the large blocking gear until the timing mark points to one of the displacement rotor shafts. It doesn't matter which one you start with. Position the Woodruff keyway on the displacement rotor shaft away from the large gear timing mark. Press the Woodruff key in the slot on the shaft. Slide the small gear onto the shaft with the tapered opening down, making sure the timing marks align exactly as you mesh the teeth. Now, rotate the large blocking gear until the timing marks point to the other displacement rotor shaft. 
Position the Woodruff keyway on the displacement rotor shaft away from the large gear timing mark. Press the Woodruff key in the slot on the shaft. Slide the small gear onto the shaft with the tapered opening down, making sure that the timing marks align exactly as you mesh the teeth. You may have to slightly reposition the small gear a few times to get perfect alignment. With all gears in place, rotate the gears to make sure the rotors turn freely. If the rotors do not turn freely, remove the gears and rotors and deburr and clean the surfaces. Confirm that the timing mark on the large blocking gear aligns with the respective displacement gear timing mark as it makes a complete revolution. If off, even by one tooth, you must repeat the gear installation procedure until the marks match perfectly. Apply Loctite 242 to all rotor screw threads before installation. Place the dome washers with the curved side up on the 7 16 screws used for securing the small displacement shaft gears. Install the screws and finger tighten. Install the hex screw with the packing gland driver onto the blocking rotor shaft. Make sure that the notch on the bottom of the packing gland driver seats into the Woodruff key slot on the gear and shaft. Finger tighten the screw. Use the spare rotor gear as shown or a shop rag to prevent the gears from turning. Tighten the displacement gear rotor screws with a 7 16 socket or wrench. Tighten the blocking rotor screw with the Allen wrench. Finish by torquing to the specifications published in the manual. Install the cover O-ring into the groove on the housing surface. Position and install the front housing cover with the half inch screws. The front cover has a hole for the packing gland assembly. Be sure to apply anti-seize compound to the threads of each of the cover screws. These are self-tapping screws. To ensure proper alignment of the threads cut by the screw, turn each screw counterclockwise until you feel it drop into the thread. Then turn the screw in the clockwise direction until finger tight. Tighten the cover screws in a crisscross pattern as shown in the manual with a minimum of two passes. The first pass should be at half torque with the second pass at full torque, approximately 66 foot-pounds. This method will ensure uniform seal compression on the cover o-ring or gasket. Install the packing gland assembly by first making sure that the forks at the bottom of the assembly insert into the slots on the packing gland driver. Line up the holes in the attachment plate with the two holes on the cover. Apply anti-seize to the threads of the 5 16 inch screws, insert and tighten with the 5 16 socket or wrench. Turn the packing gland gear to ensure smooth operation and then tighten the screws to the proper torque. Next install the counter bracket assembly. Make sure the counter gear aligns properly with the packing gland gear. Apply anti-seize to the four 3 8 inch hex screws that secure the bracket to the front cover. Tighten all four screws with 3 8 inch socket and then torque to specification. Lastly, reinstall the drain plugs at the bottom of the front and rear housing covers. Apply anti-seize to the threads and tighten with a quarter inch Allen wrench and then torque to specification. This completes the assembly of the Liquid Controls M7 meter. If you have any questions about the installation, operation, or maintenance of this product, please contact your local distributor. Dealer and Liquid Controls contact information can be found on our website at lcmeter.com.